from Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 to 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Today, I want to ask you, do you have spare oil for your lamp? When I first saw this week's reading, I wondered how it would ever link to remembrance. And as I researched, I came across a diary written by rifleman William Eve in January of 1915. Unsure of where to go with writing the message, I started to read. His diary made a heart-wrenching read. Every day it seemed like more of his friends were dying. There was uncertainty and loss all around him. Yet somehow he found the strength to keep going. As I continued to read, there was a clear pattern that started to emerge. Every few days, his diary entry would be more upbeat. And those days coincided with the times that he received fresh supplies and treats. He writes about hot cocoa and bread and butter and about the chaplain delivering him cigarettes. In a bleak world, when all he could do was keep on keeping on, these things gave him nourishment. It made me realise just how important it was that things were prepared and organised from the front line. If the soldiers ran out of supplies, everything would grind to a halt. It's not the thing we often think of most from remembering those that served our country, but the people putting their lives at risk to deliver, manufacture and even grow supplies were a vital part of the war effort too. So what can we learn from this? In today's reading we hear of two groups of bridesmaids. One group who are prepared for the groom coming at any time as they have spare oil for their lamps. And those who are described as foolish and have no oil. I think as we read this parable some simple connections can be made. The bridesmaids are the church, the groom is Christ, the wedding breakfast is the great and joyous occasion in which Christ comes for his church. The delay of the bridegroom corresponds with the delay in the second coming that Matthew's church had experienced. The bridegroom's arrival in the darkness of night is the second coming itself, and the closing of the door is the final judgment. But what is the oil? And not only do we have it, do we have enough? To answer this, I think we need to look over the, the wider narrative of the other parables which we've heard over the last few months, and the wider context of Matthew's Gospel. In the parable of the fruitful and unfaithful slave, the fruitful slave is the one who is found at work when the master returns, being prepared Having oil means working faithfully for the Lord. In the parable of the talents, the faithful servant used wisely the resources entrusted into their care. Being prepared, having oil, means practising good stewardship, good ecological practices, careful management of time and money, 
generosity to those in need, proclamation of the word, and in this case the possibilities go on and on. In the judgment of the nations, the Son of Man's reward those who fed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, take care of the sick, and visit the prisoner, which corresponds nicely with what Jesus identifies in his gospel as the greatest commandment, to love God and neighbour. Being prepared, having oil, means generosity to those in need. In the wider context of the entire gospel, the Sermon of the Mount gives us great insight into Christ's expectations. Being prepared, having oil, means obeying Jesus' teachings. As lockdown strikes again across the UK, and the churches are forced to close, as Christians we have two options. We either let our relationship with Jesus be conditional, on meeting on a Sunday in a church building, or we stock up on oil and focus on strengthening our relationship with Christ. We can either lean in or step out. Today as we remember those who fought for our country, I think we can look at their lives and take a lesson from them too. The hardship that they faced was so much more than we face, even in this time of lockdown. And yet there are so many stories of soldiers for whom their faith was a daily source of strength. One I'd love to share with you is the story of Ronald Merchant, who was a stretcher bearer with the Royal Army Medical Corp. He received the Military Medal for Bravery. His grandson recalled, Every night he would go out and bring back the wounded, but when sunrise came, the order was given not to go anymore, because the risk of being shot was too great. On this one particular morning, the chaplain came to him and said, There's still two men out there. I'll go if you will. He didn't want to, because the assumption was that he would get shot by a sniper. But he knew that it was the right thing to do. He said goodbye to his mother in his mind and went out. They brought back the two men, back over their shoulders, and they all got back alive. His faith was absolutely crucial to him. He was a man of prayer and read the Bible every day, and that's what gave him his strength. So how do we lean in? Firstly, we should never underestimate the power of prayer. In a recent letter from leading bishops of the Church of England, they called for this time of lockdown to be a month of prayer. When we bring our needs and the needs of the world before God, they are lifted off us and laid in his hands. We have a God who loves us, who calls us by name, who created the whole universe and yet wants to know us personally. So we should never be afraid to bring our worries and the worries of the world to God, however futile they seem. And we should always seem ready to listen and respond. When we go to God in prayer, we listen for his voice. We are watching with our lamps burning, ensuring that we are ready to do as he bids. Next, we should never underestimate the power of grounding ourselves in God's word. The Bible is a gift from God, a gift of truth and comfort in times of trouble. It says in the Bible that God's word will never return empty. And I don't know how about you. But I find that however many times I read the same passage, God reveals something more of himself to me every time. We're in lockdown again, but what an opportunity to spend some time digging into God's word. At the start of the first lockdown, I watched a sermon where the pastor said, find a comfy seat and make a hot drink and make some time every day to spend reading the Bible. Now I have to say it hasn't happened every day by any means. But when I've made the time to be alone with God and with my Bible, I found that I've come out feeling stronger and better fed. Finally, we should never underestimate the power of worship. And I don't just mean singing hymns. Instead, we can offer our whole lives in worship, living and breathing and doing and being to bring God glory. 
it changes things. It lifts our eyes from our situation and tangles us up in the beautiful sympathy, symphony with God and the holy communion of God's worshipping people. It makes us part of something that's so much bigger than ourselves. If oil is our faith, selflessness and generosity, then whole life worship is the means to an everlasting supply of oil. What we do or don't do now will either stagnate or strengthen our relationship with Jesus. And by putting the work in now, I pray that on the other side of this lockdown we will see fruitfulness for ourselves and for the church. Before I finish, I'd like to pray for us. Lord God, today as we remember those who filled their lamps through faithful service and sadly lost their lives, people from our community and beyond, we ask that you guide us on our path in faith. We are weary and it is so easy to forget to make time in our lives for you. But give us the energy to persevere, Lord, the motivation to lean into you and the commitment to prayer our lives as a sacrifice of worship so that we are ready and waiting for you with our lamp trim, trimmed and burning brightly every day and night. Amen.